Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video. Quickly want to say the giveaway is all taken care of, it's all done. Um, the four skeins of yarn have been sent off to the recipients and the only thing I've left to send right now is the unicorn stitch marker but that's all packed up and hopefully at some point this week I'll just quickly go to the post office, buy the postage and things for it and get that sent off. Um, because I had planned to sit down with this video and you know what you often see in videos where it's like these are the winners and can you please get in touch because I haven't heard from you but everyone that I contacted about winning was really quick to respond and it's just really nice. I'm always a bit worried you know the people I know people in the past um, and with other giveaways have been kind of like scammed with giveaways um, so I'm always a bit worried that people will assume that, but the good thing is like the worst thing that you're kind of doing with what I'm asking for is you're giving me your address and then, you know, after I've sent you the thing, like I'm not gonna do anything with your address. <laughs> but um, I know that with some scams, they then kind of ask you, oh, if you just, you know, pay me like this amount of money that I can get that sent out to you. And it's like, no, um, you will never get asked for money by me if I've done any sort of giveaway. You just won't be asked for money in general, I should say. Um, the only time that sort of, you know, is questionable is when I promote my Ko-Fi because there you can give money, but that's not a thing where you have to give money. And I don't know, it's complicated. But like I said, they've all pretty much been sent off. One recipient already has their yarn. Uh, it's the beauty of, I think they live somewhere relatively close in Germany. Um, so that arrived quite quickly. And then just seeing how happy people are that, you know, a lot of the people who won the yarn, or I think all of them had actually said they'd never knitted with English, you know, hand dyed yarn before. And that's exactly what I kind of wanted. So it was also kind of perfect that um, the way I did it with a random like number generator, the comment picker doesn't really work for me because I've got my two videos but I did an I put in like all the people who entered and then did a random number generator and then the way I did it is the first one who won um whatever skein of yarn they said they would prefer winning that went to them then I went for the next one and so on and it ended up perfectly that the four people who won the yarn all said a different one and then that the last winner was the one person out of that group who said, oh, I'd love to actually win the stitch marker. And I was like, it's meant to be. <laughs> it was amazing. But yeah, so hopefully if everything goes to plan in September, I'll be in the UK for Yarndale and be able to pick up hopefully a couple more skeins and run something similar. I'm also hoping to be able to run my advent calendar giveaway again, like I did last year, where you get like 24... Did I do 24, 25? I can't remember now. Um, 10 gram minis just out of like scraps and things from my stash, but they're all hand dyed. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to do a couple of those at the end of this year again. But I'll talk about that in future videos. But new podcast episode. Let's start with what I'm wearing. <laughs> I'm not wearing anything knitted. I'm sorry. I couldn't do it. I tried. I put on a variety of different things and was just like, it's too hot. I've got my fan like literally right next to me set. So it's blowing on me. Um, it's currently off because it would be too loud. But what I did with my German video was after like 20 minutes, took a bit of a break and just sat here and let myself be hit with cold air so I could cool down. So that might happen here as well, but it's too hot. <laughs> Um, I know everyone else kind of on YouTube is also complaining about it, but it very much is just a, I can't wear anything knitted. I did have something I could wear that I'm going to show off, but I like showing off the projects once I finish them and then I can wear them in like a future episode because I find with me sitting here, you just can't really see everything too well. And I just still haven't got my head around being able to film like a cutaway where I'm wearing something. My apartment is quite small. Um, I live by myself, so I can't even ask someone else, you know, just to film me somewhere. So I have to set it all up and it's just not working right now, my setup. So me wearing it, but showing it off and then wearing it in a future episode is kind of the best thing that I can currently do. But yeah, couldn't do it. It has continued to just be hot. Um, 
like the rest of Europe, especially the UK, which was hit really hard by the heat wave. It was also very hot here, um, getting up to like 39, 40 degrees, but it's the fact that, you know, everyone was then like, yay, it's cooling down. And I was like, well, it's still like 36 degrees. here. It's not really cooled down. Um, I think over the last week we had maybe one day where it got down to like 28, 26, 28 maybe. And I just don't do well in the heat. I don't like summer. I like the kind of summer where the high only hits like 26, but you still get the long sunshine hours. I just don't want it to be so warm. But so I'm not wearing anything knitted. Um, I did think about like wearing a shawl or socks or something. And I was like, no, I just, I just can't, can't do it. Plus socks you wouldn't even see. I'd quickly show my foot and that would be it. So no knitted item, but I've got plenty to show you. I've got a lot of finished objects again and not too many whips to actually show you because um, I've made some changes uh, to my knitting s style. Can you really say style? But I'm just trying to focus on specific things and I'll get into that um, once we get to the objects. But I have five finished objects objects I believe um I'll start with the one I can't find there it is right at the bottom shared these last time that I was working on these and I've now finished the second one it's the Cindy's Choice socks from 52 weeks of socks by well Cindy's Choice by Isabel Kramer from 52 weeks of socks the book isn't by her and I don't even know how many different patterns I've made from that book now. I've been thinking about potentially making a video where I go through some of my books and sh talk through some of the projects I've made and what I think about the books now that I've had some experience, but we shall see. Um, but yeah, so the second one's done, worked exactly the same way as the first. These have been washed and blocked. To be honest, I don't think the yarn changed that much. I was expecting it to really like fluff up and bloom, but like everything is a lot more even. Um, I feel like you can especially see that in, not so much in this one, more in this one, um, where the color changes, you can see that jog is just a little bit nicer looking, I find, but yeah, not much to say. I use the recommended yarn, which is Rauwerk DK, which is a Bavarian Merino, so it's rustic, um, but probably one of the softer rustic yarns because it's still a merino. And I had two skeins of my main color, one skein of the contrast, and I can show you how much I've got left. So I've got this project bag, or this tote bag, from Third Vault Yarns, I think that she gave me uh, during Yarndale last year. And in here, I pretty much just, when I finish a project, the yarn that I still have left over, I put in here. Um, and then I kind of catalog it in my Excel spreadsheet, but it's also handy for the podcast to be able to kind of show you the scraps and bits I've got left over. So this is how much my hair, this is how much I've got left of both skeins. So I've got a little bit more of my contrast color than my main color, but I did kind of look at this and go, it's almost the same amount. I was like, what could I do with this? And I did think about potentially making some elf slippers in this they would be so much warmer than the first pair that I made, but there'd be more than enough, more than enough to do that. Um, so I'm not sure yet. I'm in no rush to use these up because I do have more Frauwerk where I might have more left over once I get started on that project. So I currently don't feel any kind of, I don't feel inspired to use it for something and I don't feel pressured right now to use it for something. But there's a decent amount left, which is nice. Um, it's not the cheapest yarn. But I said in my last video when I shared the first sock that I don't think I'll make another one, at least not for me. I don't think these are socks that I would get a lot of kind of use out of it in the sense that I'll need more than one pair. Because I don't know, I look at these and I think about, you know, being in the Alps and like a little, you know, ski resort or something or just somewhere where it's cold and snowing. And I don't think I need more than one pair because when am I ever in those situations? Like, 
even in winter here, it gets cold outside, but the heating is really good, so it doesn't get too cold indoors. And I don't think I'd want to wear these outdoors. We'll see. I'll find I'll find a use for them, and then I might eat my words, because all of a sudden I'll figure out they're actually really useful in the cold weather. But yeah, so these were done. It's nice to get some projects off the needles, it always is, and I've sort of managed to contain myself with cut not casting on too many new things, so that's part of like what I'm trying to do different now. The next one, <laughs> I have to apologize, I have to apologize, I already talked about it in my last video, but like, it's, I understand. I understand now why everyone makes these. I finished my ranunculus. So last time I shared it, I was just on the body. The sleeves, I think, were both done. The yoke took no time at all. I used the recommended needles, which is six millimeter, but I, th um, I used five millimeter needles, I think, to cast on and do the ribbing at the top. But then for the sleeves and the body, I used a five and a half just to make sure they're not too tight, whereas here I didn't want a huge neckline and it fits exactly the way I wanted it. The yarn that I used is from Brambles and Me. It's naturally dyed in the UK. I had two skeins of it and I mentioned last time how it said DK on it, but I very quickly figured out it's a fingering weight based on like how it was working up in the yardage. But I'm not mad about that. It means I've got more yarn. And I had two skeins, like I said, and I ended up using some of the second one. Now the body isn't super long. It's a decent length for what I kind of like to wear in the summer. And because of the loose gauge that it's worked on, you can kind of see that it's sort of see-through. It blocked up beautifully because it is washed and blocked. And it's not as big as the ranunculus is intended to be. And that's just because I was trying to, you know, I thought I was going into this with DK weight yarn and I was like, I only have 400 meters of this. And so I tried to make it a bit more fitted to be able to get a longer body out, but well, they didn't need to do that, but I still really like it. I think the color is beautiful. I, you know, would have loved it if it was a bit more oversized, but I'm also just really happy with it. It's not tight fitting. Um, it has a little bit of ease and it's just going to be something where I'll just wear like a singlet or something underneath because I definitely need it, especially like the top is obviously see-through, but even like here, it doesn't look it. But like I said, when, when you see my hand under it, you can see it through, but it's a nice, you know, piece to be able to just throw over something else. And yes, I do want to make more, many more in fact. <laughs> The only thing is, I'm not in a rush to start another one. Um, I haven't got particular yarn in mind for another one. I do have some black cotton where I'm not too sure what to do with it. It's a bit of a thicker yarn. I don't have too much of it. So I did think a ranunculus could be quite a nice idea. Cotton in general would just be good for kind of the warmer months. Black, not the smartest idea, but anyway. But I'm in no rush to start. Another one, I am trying to get things off my needles. I guess this is the perfect time to talk about it. I've kind of tried to change my thinking. Normally I was the sort of person who was just like, if I want to cast something on, I'm going to cast something on. It's just knitting, who cares? But when I kind of looked at the project I have on my needles, I think I'm about 35 on the needles right now. And the number doesn't bother me. What bothers me is the fact that I have some projects. I have one project from... 2019? No, I think I have no projects left from 2019 when I started knitting. I finished those already last year, I think. But I still have a few projects left from 2020. And I want those done before the end of the year because starting 2023 with projects still from 2020, I was like, I'm not okay with that. And I think about half of the projects I have on the needle are from the last two years and not from this year. And I just want to be able to flip that a bit. And I'm okay with some projects being long-term. I've got a couple of blankets that won't be done anytime soon. I'm okay with that. But some of the things I've had on my needles for a long time is, you know, like a jumper or a pair of socks or something. And I'm like, just get them done. And 
So while I do want to make another ranunculus because I think the pattern is beautiful, I totally get why people love this pattern and everyone's been knitting it, I don't need to do another one right now. I've got no yarn really, like, okay, that black cotton I've got in mind, but I don't really have any yarn where I'm like, oh, I've had it for ages like that from Brambles and Me, which is like a BFL cashmere silk blend, I think which I've just had in my stash since 2019. And I was like, well, I thought it was decaying weight. And I was like, I can't make much with it. Um, and I have a lot left over because like I said, it is actually fingering weight. So I think it's like 70 grams or something that I still have left, but color work or, um, cause it's hand dyed. Um, the advent calendars I was talking about, I'll find a use for it. But, so I'm not going to be starting any more ranunculi soon. And I do have to say the whole thing with the ranunculus, like, it was just a bit frustrating that I wanted to knit one for a while. But seeing so many people on YouTube knit them and then, you know, not just knit one, but knit like three or four, it just felt a bit like... I don't know, like everyone was on this like hype train and I felt pressured to get onto that hype train because I'm also doing knitting videos on YouTube and I kind of went against it. Like I'm not the sort of person for people who know me, I am not one to try and go against, you know, the herd for the sake of going against the herd. If I don't do what everyone else is doing, it's because I just don't want to. Like I've already made up my mind. It doesn't matter if everyone else is doing it, I just don't want to. And if everyone else is doing something and I do want to do it, I just do it. But with this ranunculus, I really just felt like I could tell from some of the comments and videos and things that people were getting really sick of seeing everyone make one. And that was part of the reason why it took me so long to make one. And the reason I finally was like, I'm just going to do it now is one, because the sizing was fixed with a pattern to have like multiple sizings, sizings, sizes. And then also that yarn was just sitting on my stash. It was stressing me out because I didn't know what to do. And I was like, I'm just going to make a ranunculus. I know 400 meters will work out on a crop t-shirt. Obviously then found out it was fingering weight. I'm going to stop talking about that. <laughs> but so I kind of just want to say like, I don't know. There are the projects where I feel the same way, where everyone on YouTube and Instagram seems to be making them. And there's almost this like, this odd mixture of pressure to knit it, but then also not to knit it because everyone's doing it. And like I said, it doesn't normally bother me doing what everyone else is doing if I want to do it. But something with this was that with the internet, people don't know you as well as, you know, people who know you in your personal life do. So someone in my personal life if I made the ranunculus, wouldn't really think anything of it because, you know, they'd be like, oh yeah, this would totally be something you'd be into. And, but on the internet, it's a bit harder that it just feels like you're buying into it because everyone else is doing it. Whereas, you know, like I said, I'm the sort of person that I do something because I want to do it. And so then to kind of show people that I'm not falling for the hype, just I'm not doing this just because everyone else is doing. I didn't do it, even though I did want to. That was a long way of kind of just saying like, I'm happy I've now made one. You don't worry, this channel isn't going to become one where all of a sudden there's all these ranunculi flying around. Not that there's anything wrong with that. If that's what people want to do and they want to knit all of these, I totally get it. Uh, but I also understand that there is this kind of fatigue and can you say boredom with the pattern and seeing it all the time? Uh, Cause I'm not sure that could, there's much left to be said about it. Um, but I am glad I've tried it now. I completely understand why people love the pattern and I will make more at some point in the future, but I am in no rush. Um, I know it's a comfort knit for a lot of people. I don't think it is for me. Uh, the body on six millimeter needles was so hard on my hands. <laughs> So if I make another one, it would be on smaller needles, tighter gauge and go for a bigger size. Cause I can't do that again, but I love the one I've made and we'll leave it at that. <laughs> uh, okay. The summer knit, 
that I was like, I could wear that today. And then was kind of like, I want to be able to show it off is one of my make nine. So I shared this last time. This is the Aosta summer top by the Knit Pearl Girl. So last time I shared it, I had one sleeve already done and I had explained how they're not very long because this is meant to have negative ease. I made it with positive ease. So I made a size like three times bigger than recommended. And that meant with the raglan, the way that that's constructed, by the time I split for sleeves, it was already sitting further down my shoulder than normal. And so then the sleeve didn't need to be too long um, after splitting for it to already sit quite low, exactly where I wanted it. And I'd only had like a little bit of the body done last time. And I remember talking about like, I've got, I had four skeins in total of the cotton by We Are Knitters. And I was worried I wouldn't have enough and would have to either buy more from We Are Knitters, which I wasn't too sure about if I wanted to do or see if someone was destashing some. And then I was worried about dye lots. And I was like, well, let's just see if I can get it to work. And I did, it worked out perfectly. I couldn't have even, you know, even just like a couple more meters. Didn't need it. Literally didn't need it. It worked out perfectly. So like with the ranunculus, the length isn't as long as I normally would make in a jumper, but for a t-shirt, perfect length. And I think I literally had like a meter left at the end. And I did a tubular cast off on everything. And cast on, I believe, yeah. But I was a bit smart I guess you could say or tricksy with um how I made the yarn kind of work for the to get to get it to work with the yarn that I had so what I did is they typically it's recommended that for the tubular cast off that you leave um an end of yarn to do that bind off that is about four times three to four times the full circumference of the thing that you're binding off so what I did when I didn't have too much yarn left is I took the end, measured out four times the circumference of the top and the bind off that I had to do and put a little knot there. And I knew when I got to this point, I had to start casting off um, to make sure I had enough yarn. Now I typically do find I get away with three times the circumference, but I always measure out four just in case, because sometimes it can be really hard when something's on your needle to be able to like measure it correctly. And I always know four times and I have more than enough and don't have to stress. And then I also had somehow figured out roughly how much yarn I use. I think what I did is I figured out how much yarn I would use roughly for one round. I think I measured out four times the amount of yarn from where I was currently at, saw how far I could knit and then was able to determine if that was enough or not. I can't remember now if it was though. I think it was about four times the full body was enough for one round. Don't quote me on that. And so then what I did is I calculated how many rounds of ribbing I wanted at the end. And then once again, measured that out and multiplied it, you know, by four, put a knot in there and then I knew I had to keep knitting the body or I could keep knitting the body until I hit that first knot. That's where I have to start the ribbing. And you have to end the Andalusian stitch for the Aosta on one of these knit pearl rounds. So I then knew when I got to that round and finished it, how much yarn do I still have left before that first knot? And I was like, okay, I'm not going to get a full repeat out again. I'll start the ribbing now. And then did the ribbing until I reached the end of a round and was like, that final knot's getting closer and closer. I'm not going to be able to get another round out. And then I did the bind off. And like I said, I had about a meter left at the end. So my yarn estimations worked really well for it. And it's just really nice to know that with four skeins of this yarn, I can get out another top like this. And... It's an oversized one. I could probably even go down one size and still have some positive ease, but this is now like the perfect throw on. It's not crazy oversized. Um, so there's still some structure to it, but it's not as form fitting as it's intended to be. Yeah, so that's another make nine done. I can't even remember how many are finished now. I think it's quite a few and 
I would love to work with that cotton again. It's unbelievable. I think it's the best cotton I've ever worked with. And it's just so frustrating that there's this issue now with can can you and should you support we and it is or not. And before it was just so easy to go, yeah, yeah it's fine. <laughs> oh, well, it's a good thing to think a bit more about what we're consuming. And then I've got two more finished objects. I know. I really, I've been thinking about... If I film once a week, and bear in mind I have to do, have to, I choose to do my videos in English and in German, so it's two videos that I'd have to film, um, but filming one day a week would mean that my videos wouldn't be as long, and I know some people like longer videos, so would find that kind of upsetting or annoying, but it would mean I don't, like in a week there's only so much knitting you can get done. So then I don't have as much to talk about, which means I don't then absolutely exhaust myself with the filming and don't have so many projects to talk about. So, and then I'd be able to kind of talk about some other things as well, which I often just don't feel less time for. So we'll see. We'll see whether I keep going with once a week, the one a month I've sort of been doing now sporadically. Um, but whatever will happen will happen. <laughs> The light is coming in more and more. But if I close this off anymore, it's potentially going to get too dark. What if I do this? This? I've still got this one on here. It's okay. It's coming in from the other side, but I think we still get enough light. Uh, the next finished object I have is, I think it was in my last video, I talked about the three test knits I was kind of working on at the same time. Um, and I I don't know if I talked about it in the last video, but it wasn't a bad experience because I've had times where I've done two test knits at the same time and it was awful. But that's because they both had a tight turnaround and they both, I think, were quite small needles, whereas the three projects I had on my needles at the same time used different needles. They used very different yarn. One had a relatively tight deadline of a month, but it was bigger needles, so it was fine. And then the other two had quite a long test knit period, so I wasn't stressed at all. But so the no sweatshirt um, was the one where it was about a month, but it was like four millimeter needles or something, and it was just a hoodie it was intended to be cropped I made mine a bit longer and it was DK weight yarn I think so that one went quite quickly it was also a very different kind of thing to be able to you know attach a hoodie to it like a hood um so the whole thing was just really enjoyable to knit and then the love magic dress yes it was a whole dress but it wasn't like five millimeter needles or something and the whole thing went quite quickly because I was excited. I really wanted to make a dress for such a long time. And I had so long for that test knit. And then this one that I've now finished, the Sundial Sweater by Iris, is one that I think we had the longest for, actually. And it the deadline has been extended even further. I think it's been moved twice now. Just because some people haven't been able to kind of get started for whatever reason. Um, and most of us are currently struggling to actually be able to take pictures because of the heat wave. And then also it's just still too warm here in Germany for me to be able to take proper pictures without me just being like a tomato face. But anyway, <laughs> so I still haven't taken finished object pictures for this, um, which I really need to try and do at some point. I just need like a day where it cools down. But this is what it looks like. I have no idea where I was up to last time. I wish I had checked that, but I didn't. Sorry. But sleeves are now both done. And no decreases in decreasing at all, except right at the end. Um, so they're just kind of straight sleeves. Then you do a quick decrease. And then the ribbing. And throughout the whole thing, you've got this broken rib pattern in there, which I think is absolutely stunning. So yeah, both sleeves done. And body also completely done. So... Those of you with keen eyes might be able to see the body is actually much shorter than I would normally knit. Now it's not cropped, but the reason is because I knit a size bigger than I would normally do. So a lot of jumpers would typically recommend two to four inches of ease. 
I have personally figured out for most things, I like two inches of ease. That gives me enough room to feel comfortable, but for it to be a bit more form fitting and not just, because that's the thing with oversized, right? There's this balance between, you don't want to look like you're wearing a sack, (laughs) but you also want it to be kind of big enough to feel relaxed in it. And so for me, that's typically just about two inches. Four inches is also okay. And I think with this one, I have a bit more than four. I think I have five inches with this one. So it's kind of just quite often when I choose a pattern, I typically fall either in the, I fall between two sizes where it's, if I wanted to be a bit more fitted and closer to the two inches, I'd need the smaller size. And if I want something that's a bit more oversized and slouchy, I'd have to go for like the next size up. And so Iris asked me, um, if I, I applied to test it and she was like, would you mind doing the size bigger? Because I think I even said I could do either one. My preference would be like the smaller one for the fit I like, but I can do the bigger one, no problem. And so she asked, would you mind doing the bigger one? And I was like, no problem at all. I know with the bigger sizes, it can be hard to find testers. And this is the thing, my size that I typically make falls into kind of the normal range where people will test it. And the bigger size is typically one of the ones where people don't, there's not as many people willing to test it. But the interesting thing is now that I've made something which is kind of on the bigger end, of the recommended ease. I don't have to knit the sleeves and the body as long because the yoke falls lower. It's like with the Aosta summer top because that all and the separating for sleeve happens lower down. I don't need as much sleeve or as much body. It's great. Obviously there is still more knitting in some ways. Maybe it is the same when you calculate it because either I have to knit a longer yoke Um, and then also have more stitches on my sleeves and the body, or I knit a shorter yoke, but then have to knit longer body and sleeves. So I think it kind of all, you know, works out the same in the end, but it's really nice. It is a beautiful fit. Um, hopefully I can get pictures soon and post them on Instagram. Um, and then maybe in the future, either wear it on here or share some pictures. The pattern isn't out yet. I think it's going to be out in August, so it's still going to be a while, but it's stunning, and I definitely want to make another one. Um, It's just with the, like, broken rib pattern and the increases happening in the stockinette part, and the kind of change in the broken rib combined with then having a row where you're doing increases. I don't know, the yoke was just a pleasure to knit. And then the rest of it was also just really fun because you weren't just going round and round in a circle. You always had those little breaks. So it was like, I'll just knit to the next, you know, little section. And then you keep going and keep going. And the yarn that I used, the, um, I used Holst Super Soft in the color Spring. I had 400 grams in total of this, uh, two 200 gram, like grab bags or whatever they're called from Holst. And like I said, in the color spring, and I think I used about 200 grams. It could be that I used a little bit, that this might have come from the next 200 gram bag. Um, I can't remember now, <laughs> but it was about 200 grams. And then for the mohair, and I had this in my stash already, same thing with the mohair, I had six gains of the knitting for all of soft silk mohair in the color dusty artichoke and this is how much I have left of my sixth skein so it worked out perfectly the only annoying thing is that past Nina panicked that she wouldn't have enough mohair and then went well I don't want different dye lots so if I order it sooner rather than later I might get lucky and get the same dye lot and I did but I didn't need the final skein of the mohair so I now have one skein of the mohair left (laughs) I'll find something to do with it, but it's just a bit frustrating. I'm like, Nina, if you had just waited, you would have been fine. Like I did it with the AOS, the summer top. Why did I not do it with this? But anyway, so nothing I can really do with this. That will just go into the like bag I keep um, with all my like 
unusable scraps and when I wind up like a skein of yarn the ends that I have to cut off I keep those and at some point I'll send them to hedgehog fibers so they can recycle them and use them for something I definitely like I said want to make another one I have no idea in what yarn um, I really do love how it all comes out with the mohair and I just think the color is stunning the whole design of it is so beautiful and just very different to anything I've ever made before or seen before. So once that is out, highly recommend it. I really want to make the top version for next year summer because I don't think I'm going to get any more summer projects done this year, <laughs> which means I've only really done one. It is what it is. And then the last one is one that's been on my needle since June last year. So just over a year. It's finally done. I haven't washed it or blocked it. Should say the Sundell sweater has been washed and blocked. That's why it's like it's softened up beautifully and it I think it just looks stunning. But this next one hasn't been blocked yet. And this is part of the whole change that I'm trying to make where I'm actually going back to these old projects and finishing them. Now, in my defense, <laughs> not that I need a defense, but a lot of these older projects were in Austria, so I couldn't work on them between, you know, like beginning of December until, when was I there? March? No, that was the EOYF. May? <laughs> Whenever I was lost in Austria. <laughs> I don't remember. So it, it's been a while since I've been able to work on these. So it's, you know, kind of like, okay, if I didn't finish them sooner, it was for a reason. But it doesn't stop me from, you know, just wanting to finish them. <laughs> so the project I'm talking about is the, oh, nope, the Seasons Sweater. Yes, season Sweater by Ozetta. And like I said, started this last year. And isn't it beautiful? I love it so much. Now, I did not gauge swatch for this and it definitely came out too big which meant it ate up a lot of yarn and I was really panicking towards the end, like with a lot of my projects recently. But let me show you what yarn I have left. Um, the mohair I used is a hand dyed one by the Fiber Fox. This is Fairy Godmothers. Where is it? There it is. And I think I had three or four skeins of this i think it was three and i bought it <laughs> i'd bought it and wasn't too sure what to do with it because i think from memory i wanted to make the sweater with it but it needs a dk and it needs a mohair and i was like the mohair hand dyed is already quite pricey any hand dyed yarn is quite pricey, it's just the nature of it. But then I was like, I'd love to also have Fairy Godmothers on DK and knit the sweater, but I was like, I can't afford that, it's too much. So then what I did, because I, as I, when I had bought this, I hadn't knitted with mohair all that much yet. I had a couple of projects, but I'd always kind of matched my mohair really well to my fingering, whatever the other skein of yarn was whatever weight and it wasn't until I kind of started doing the cozy classic raglans where I was marling a lighter and a dark color that I realized how dominant mohair really is you wouldn't think it based on the weight like if you're using a DK in a mohair you would think that the mohair wouldn't dominate but I do think it does and I think you can see that when I show you that the DK weight yarn I used is this creamy color this is 100% Jacobs from West Yorkshire Spinners. I think I had like six skeins of this. And it's really affordable yarn. I think it was like five or six pounds for a 100 gram skein. It only comes in the natural colors of like the Jacobs sheep. But there's a lot of variety. I'll include a picture of the Jacob sheep because I think they're beautiful and so interesting. And so that creamy color and this mohair where was it here <laughs> then created this jumper where i think yes you can see the like dk weight yarn through that cream color and that would have been different had i used a different yarn but 
the mohair really does come through with those different colors and it's that light speckled look that I really wanted and I think especially because the yarn was you know is very white with small specks of colors I knew I wanted to go for something kind of equally white to be able to show that off and I'm really happy with it now last time I showed it I had just separated for sleeves I'd done a few rounds of the body and I think I'd run out of the DK weight yarn I'd like I'd finished this gain and I started a sleeve and I'd finished the sleeve I do believe and I knew at the time when I finished the sleeve it was going to be very big I knitted it to the instructions and normally I have to knit sleeves longer but because I didn't do a gauge swatch and I didn't hit gauge and it was much bigger the sleeve before blocking and this is done in half fisherman's rib so it grows I know it's gonna grow it was already like down here <laughs> on my hand and I was like eh, whatever it will just be a very comfy oversized sweater but by the time I started working on it again um after I got it back from Austria I was like I'm worried I'm gonna run out of yarn because yes it's comfy and cozy if the sleeves are that long but it means I might not have enough yarn to finish the body so I did the second sleeve before I worked on the body and I knitted it differently. I knitted it to a better length. So I did the decreases, I think a bit quicker, didn't do as many, and then just kind of like finished it and then tried it on and was like, that fits much better. And with blocking, it will give me just a little bit extra length that I'm looking for. So then I went back, undid a decent chunk of the first sleeve and then knitted it to match up with the second one I'd already done. And that got me back some yarn, which was perfect because then I went, did the body and because it is so much bigger than it was intended to be, I didn't need to make the body as long as was recommended, just like I didn't need to do the sleeves as long, just like with the last two projects I showed you, because the whole thing, like the body is bigger, I don't need as much length any anywhere else. And that's why wherever I have put it, did I just put it back in? Yeah. This is all I have left of the DK. <laughs> so it was tight. <laughs> it just worked out. And I'm really happy with the finished thing. I really do want to weave in the ends and block it. Um, I kind of just have been avoiding it because it is such a warm jumper. And it just doesn't feel nice to have it on me like I do right now on my lap. But I think it's going to be beautiful. And that is something... I really want to do more often. So I spent a decent amount of money on the mohair, but in exchange, kind of, I didn't spend a lot of money on the DK weight yarn. And that's then the beautiful thing that I still got a jumper where you get that beautiful hand dyed mohair coming through, but I didn't spend an absolute fortune on it where I then wouldn't want to wear it because of how much money I would have had to spend on it. And so I think that's something I really want to do again of investing my money in hand dyed mohair. And let's be honest, if you actually calculate how much hand dyed mohair costs for like the sweaters quantity you need, and then for a lot of the kind of commercial brands, you don't save that much money going commercial. Obviously things like drops have very affordable mohair, but if you kind of go for something like knitting for all of the price difference between what you get with hand, what you have to spend with hand dyed yarn isn't that great. So it's somewhere compared to the difference between like a hand dyed skein of fingering weight sock yarn compared to a normal sock yarn, that price difference is much greater. And so you can get a beautiful hand dyed, you know, a beautiful sweater made out of some hand dyed yarn, which I think, you know, looks like it costs more than it did. <laughs> Not that that matters, but it's a way to kind of let the mohair shine and be able to get a project that isn't going to cost you as much as if the whole thing was made out of hand dyed yarn. So that's something, like I said, I really want to do again. And I do have to say the Jacobs yarn that I used when I bought that yarn, because I was like, I want to try and, you know, keep the costs down. This one's really cheap. The BFL was, I think... 
nine or 10 pounds, maybe even more per skein per hundred grams. And, and I was like, no, but this is cheaper, but I'm worried about, is it going to be too rustic and scratchy? And back then I was very picky and sensitive. Only merino and cashmere and silk and nothing too scratchy. Even BFL was a bit too mm, rustic. And so it's interesting when this yarn arrived and I was like, oh no, it's so scratchy and itchy. I don't like it. It's way too rustic. And I did start thinking, do I really want to use my beautiful mohair with a yarn that I think I then won't be able to wear the finished jumper because it's just too scratchy. And then I was like, no, let's just knit it up anyway. You know, blocking can do wonderful things. Maybe the mohair will really dominate with the feel and it won't be too, you know, scratchy. Fast forward to now, when I started working on this again, I remember picking it up for the first time and being like, oh, I love how this feels. It's so soft. The Jacob is, Jacobs is unbelievably soft now, in my opinion. But that's because I really got used to more rustic yarns. I've said it before that, yes, Merino is wonderfully soft and great, but for people who kind of then go, but I can't do anything scratchier or more rustic than that it just doesn't work for me for most people not everyone some people do have skin sensitivities as in like an actual thing where they can't have some things on their skin because it will irritate them most people the sensitivity that they have is due to kind of exposure i was one of those so the merino felt amazing but even merino didn't feel great when i was working with 100 percent cashmere but after a little while of working with the Merino again, it felt glorious. And then when I started working with BFL, uh, at first I was like, whoa, this is so scratchy compared to the Merino. But then as I worked more with BFL, I was like, wow, this is really soft in a different way to Merino, but still really soft. And then, you know, I work with Wensleydale and Jacobs and then Plutolope and Neuterdom came into my life. And slowly over time, I started to... I don't know, not be sensitive to it anymore because I was working with more rustic yarns. So I do think there is kind of jumping straight from merino and especially like merino cashmere blends to like Plesilope and lo Lopi yarn in, in general. Wouldn't recommend. The difference is too big. But BFL is one of the ones that I really recommend if you want to get into more rustic yarns. Work with that for a bit and then Jacobs next probably is a big step up because Jacobs isn't the softest. Uh, Wensleydale is one of those ones where people also say it's quite rustic, but there are a variety of different breeds where you can slowly step up and work through that sensitivity because it's a lot to do with one temperature. Like this doesn't feel as soft now as it did when I picked it up again for the first time because it's too warm here today. But when it cools down, that's when it starts to feel softer and nicer on the skin because my skin can handle having something on it. And so there is the temperature thing and then there's also the expo exposure thing. The more you constantly are surrounded by more rustic yarns, for most people, like I said, not everyone, you do just get used to it. That's how I did it. And now I can't go back. I still use merino and superwash yarn and things, but this is my love. And it smells so good and sheepy. Now, it's not the sheepiest yarn. Same thing with the Rauwerk one I showed. They're not like crazy sheepy because I know not everyone likes the smell. And that's fair enough. But yeah, so this is one of the older projects. I can't wait to block it so I can really see what it looks like. Um, but it felt so good to get that done. And to be able to really use up that yarn. And yes, I still have some of the mohair, but I think that might be something I keep for um, one of the projects from Pom Pom. Is it called Cloud Bow? Where you can do like the top or the dress. I'm trying to keep some of my mohair to potentially make one of those because I think that would be really cool. Just an easy throw over something top. That's all my finished objects. Yeah. So I haven't got many whips to show you, which I already said at the beginning. I'm going to show you five whips and then a few kind of things that I've got planned to be able to do over the next, however long before the next video comes out. <laughs> the first whip is something I haven't shown in a really long time and also something that I started in 2021. And 
yeah, it must have been 2021. Yes, 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 2021. I'm panicking here that it was 2020. It's not. Uh, I have very, very few projects left from 2020. But uh, this is the Spring Intentions Wrap by Cat Weaver or her knitting podcast, if you know it, which I'm sure you do. Heather and Hops. I absolutely love her podcast. I know it's not for everyone. Um, like with most podcasts, it kind of depends of on like who you are as a person, what kind of energy you like because I do find you get these kind of podcasts which have a very soothing very calming then you get these podcasts where it's very rigid in I don't know it's much more kind of strict and logical talking about the project and really trying to be super informative where sometimes I find podcasts can sound scripted which I don't like but I know other people do because not everyone is a fan of the ramble, <laughs> which I can understand. And then I find in the middle, you kind of get these sort of chaotic people where there's still like a huge range, but where things are a bit, can be soothing and calming, but at the same time, they're also very chaotic and just hard to explain. But I like Kat's podcast, Heather and Hops, because the project she makes are unbelievable. I find her very inspiring with how she deals with knitting things over and over again, using her stash, really appreciating what she has. And she's very creative, which is always a nice thing. And I like her kind of honesty with just expressing herself and being who she is. I think that's a lovely thing that can be really hard to do on the internet. Anyway, that's a long way of saying, this is the Spring Intentions wrap by Heather and Hops. Last time I showed it to you, so started here, doo -doo 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 -doo, lots of little different patterns and different colors of yarn. And last time I was here at this beautiful stitch marker by Adventures in Yarn Craft. It's a little skein, it's actual yarn. And since then, I haven't got the needles on it right now. I've knitted up all of this. So this is definitely my favorite color. I, you're meant to use six colors for this. I only used three. No, I have more than three. You're meant to use more than six? So meant to be eight? Or is it three colors and a main color? I think that's what it is. So you're meant to use more than that, but I just used what I had and this is all plumpy, the plumpy base by the Fiber Fox. The blue one is a happy accident color and the other skeins are from her Mystery Sock Club from 2021. Where I wasn't too sure what to do with them. With the first color, I made a pair of socks and I was like, could do that for the rest of them. That would be amazing socks to have, really soft and amazing because it has some cashmere in it. And it has like, I think the meter is 350 meters per 100 yarn. So it's just a bit of a fatter, plumper, rounder yarn, hence the name. And, but this color is definitely my favorite. That's why I've used it so much. I'm kind of just choosing when I change color. I'm not thinking about it. It's literally just when I make, I want a different color. I'm just going to use it now. I'm sort of following the pattern with when it recommends to change color, but I'm not always sticking to it. And it's just a really beautiful mindful knit, not mindless. You do have to check the pattern relatively often because as you can see, there's lots of different patterns and textures and there is quite a bit of purling, which is why it took me so long to just even get like this far because I was just not in the mood for it. But because I haven't had a lot of projects recently that have required purling until very recently, it's been nice to have that change. And all of a sudden I really was in a mind space where I needed a project like this, where there was a bit of thinking, but not too much. And there was change and it was just beautiful to pick up and work. So this section here that I worked up took nearly no time at all. And the reason I kind of stopped working on it was because I wanted to try and focus on some of these other like older projects, which reminds me, I should say the season sweater because it's half fisherman's rib, there's a lot of purling. Because the way that you work in the round is you purl a row 
and then you purl a stitch, knit into the stitch below, purl a stitch, knit into the stitch below. So it's like brioche, like half brioche, but work differently. And so if you don't like purling, would not recommend this pattern. If you like the look of it and are okay with a cardigan, you don't have the problem with a cardigan because it's worked flat. It's not seamed or anything, but because you've got the opening of a cardigan, it means that what would be your pearl rounds um, when working in the round, so you have this for the sleeves with the cardigan, you are then actually knitting because the body is flat. So there's much less purling in the cardigan than the jumper version. Just saying. Um, I still have a lot, back to the spring intention wrap, I still have a lot to go. I think I may be approaching halfway, but I'm not sure. Uh, I haven't worked on it in the last few days, more than like more like a week, can't remember now. And I would like to get this done sooner rather than later. One, because it's an old project, but an, it's also just... It would just be nice to get it off my needles. Just, it would feel good. I also have been enjoying working on it, like I said. And it's just exactly the sort of mindful knitting that my brain has been craving. And... Yeah, so hopefully I'll be able to make a decent amount of progress before my next video and just really try and dedicate some time to it and hopefully not run out of yarn. But we'll see on that one because that is a real worry. Really is like all my projects now, isn't it? And I've shared this project back before. This is from Studio Nora. She sells these on Etsy. You can see the label there. Um, it's dyed with plants. Um, and I think it's just absolutely beautiful. You can, like I said, buy these on Etsy. She also has a podcast which I really love and have recommended before. And this probably, you know, won't hit the same as it did in my German video. Not that I know how it hit. I just filmed it. But I just don't think people are likely to know it. These little pins I have on here. So they're something from Germany. They're called Manselmännchen. Uh, Männchen just means like little guy and my mum and I when she was vid visiting went both to Cologne Cologne in German and then also something a bit closer to uh, where I live is a place called Mantz Mantzelmännchen any connections there <laughs> so they're just something from that area there's a shop where they sell a lot of like fun little things but they're really cute it's like this sort of little cartoon of these little guys like there's a lot of different ones but it's not like a cartoon on its own it's like it was done by the like broadcasting company so whenever they have you know like a ads and things to break it up from what you were just watching they'll show these little like mantle minion doing like cute little funny things and they're adorable <laughs> <laughs> sounds it doesn't sound interesting or, or adorable as i'm saying it but <laughs> if i can maybe i'll be allowed to include just like a short clip or i'll include a link to a video where you can kind of see them and see why i think they're so adorable but yeah i picked up a couple of pins picked up a t-shirt that's literally why my mum and i went there just to go to the shop and then we did kind of look around and see more and the cute thing is they have the traffic lights there i'm not sure how many people are aware of it but one thing in berlin is kind of like the traffic lights for pedestrians like the pedestrian crossing is a very specific design that's different to the traditional one and there's been a lot of like different ones um there was one in new zealand for a um, like women's rights activist um, I know in Austria and other places they've done like two people together so sometimes it was a man and a woman then it was a man and a man, woman and a woman to kind of celebrate different relationships and pride and things and so they had like these little manselmännchen for some of their like pedestrian lights and it was adorable oh I want to live there just because it's so cute well, that's my first whip <laughs> can you tell i love them they're so cute
Um, but yeah, so that's one of my old whips. And I've got two other ones that are old and then two new cast-ons. Yes, that makes five. The next old project I have is something I started in November in Austria. I don't even remember fully how it came about, but I I think it was with unpacking. I looked at a couple of my projects that I'd already finished and kind of started to wonder, is should I potentially unravel this and do something else with the yarn because I'm just not getting use out of it? So what I'm currently working on is, I don't have too much to show you, and I have less to show you, I think, than last time I showed it, and I'll explain why. But this is the beginnings <laughs> of the Novice Cardigan Chunky Edition by Petite Knit. Now the colours aren't coming off exactly right, but you can hopefully see that this collar is a much darker colour than the main colour. So the yarn I'm using is... Um, this skein that's completely unraveling. This is uh, like Surrey alpaca and silk. This is by Fiber Spates. It's the Cumulus base. Can't remember the color. I'm sorry, but I have a couple of skeins of these just in my stash. And the other yarn I'm using is I think it's called the Feeling Good yarn by Wool and the Gang. And I'd used this yarn to make a top. I bought like the whole kit. I bought the pattern. I bought. I think I bought the needles, or I might have already had them. I uh, bought the yarn, and it was this really nice T-shirt. I love the color, and I really did enjoy it. But when I finished it, I it, it's knit in pieces and then seamed together, which I don't do anymore unless I have to. But it didn't have any sort of like shaping, like short rows or anything, because that would have been quite tricky, you know those kits are meant to be quite beginner friendly and so it just kept riding up and just wasn't very comfortable so I made the choice to unravel it and then kind of decided I'd cast this on and I had a darker skein which is this color here but only one and you can see the color match is just unbelievable and then I was like I'm okay with a mild effect here um, but what happened is last time I shared it back in like November I think I had like this much already from like the stitch marker like I probably had it up to like here and the stitch marker is where the last increase round was and I was about to do the next one or I think I'd already started doing it and it didn't work out so I counted my stitches I had way too many and the way that this kind of worked is you knit like with it with the increase round you like knit two stitches increase knit two stitches increase all the way and then the next time it would be knit three stitches increase. And so what I think I did is I rework the same increase um, twice. So I had way more stitches than I was meant to. And so I just made the choice, unravel all the stockinette stitch I was doing, go back to the increase round, um, check my stitch count, it was perfect, and then knit again and just keep going. I think I still have a couple of increase rounds to go, sadly, but... You know, it's a slow going project, even though it's on big needles. It's six millimeter needles. I don't enjoy such big needles. Um, but I keep telling myself one or two rows every now and then, and slowly it will start to grow. <laughs> and I think in the end, it's going to look really cool. It's just, you know, got to get through, through all this. It's a lot of purling, which right now I'm enjoying. Um, but obviously, those rows are a little bit slower. And yeah, so we'll see how much progress I make on this. It's not the worst project because it's just from last year and the end of last year, but it is one where I'm reusing the yarn. So I just want it to be done and not have to, you know, have that in my stash anymore. Um, and it's nice that the series from my stash as well, but yeah, novice cardigan. So it's not a hard pattern at all. Um, and it just kind of worked out perfectly with that yarn and the gauge and everything. So, slow going project, but I'm okay with that. Even my computer was getting too hot there. Well, just me. Not many projects left now, though, that I'm going to talk about in this video. <laughs> I've got lots on the needles. Uh, the next one is technically the oldest garment I have, or proper project, because 
The oldest one I currently have on my needles is a scrappy blanket, but you know, that just uses scraps. This is actual yarn for the project. And, but this is worse that I haven't finished. It's the blankets, I'm absolutely fine. They're gonna take however long they're gonna take. I'm not stressed about them. And you know, I'll share those whenever I feel like I've made a decent amount of progress. But this one is a bit embarrassing. So this is the Telecom cardigan by Soprano Knits, Becky Sorensen. It's better if I show you the back. And I'm using the 2020 advent calendar uh, by the Fiber Fox. And I didn't start this project until about the mid, mid-December 2020 because I wasn't entirely sure what I wanted to make. I had a pattern in mind because I wanted to work in the round, but then it kind of would have been really complicated with getting the colors to work and stuff. And I was like, okay, that's not happening. And then I thought I could get this pattern to work. And, you know, it was really easy at the beginning because, you know, you're casting your stitches, you do your raglan increases, it's all easy breezy, easy going. Then I split for the sleeves and then I panicked. And I was like, hang on, wait because now I need yarn left over so I can do both sleeves. I can't just keep knitting until I feel like changing and, you know, don't have to worry. Before I didn't have to worry with these early colors, how much yarn I had left. It was fine. The only thing I had to think about was if I didn't want there to be too much of one color compared to another. Yeah, and then with the body, all of a sudden I just I just stopped and hadn't worked on it in so long like it's bad how long I haven't worked on it and then I brought it with me from Austria and I was like Nina you haven't finished your 2021 advent calendar the 2022 advent calendars are being dyed can you at least finish your 2022 one and I was like okay Nina I'll do that (laughs) so I then sat down looked at the pattern figured out how many stitches I have for the body how many stitches I have for each sleeve and figured out like what percentage the sleeve stitches are of the body because I have less sleeve stitches than body stitches. So then I was able to figure out, well, I have that, they're 20 gram minis, but typically you get a little bit more, but that was going to be my like, like a little bit of extra in case I made an error. And I then just figured out, okay, if I knit this much, this many grams for the body, I'll have enough left for the sleeves. And that ended up being, after splitting for sleeves, that I needed to knit six rows in each color. Now I alternated, because this worked flat, I did a row there, row back, then did the new color, um, and just kind of faded them as best as I could. It's the first time I've done a fade project. Um, All the way through until the end, and then I was really worried I wouldn't have enough to make the body like the length I wanted, but it worked out perfectly. Uh, because I then figured out that the sleeves have decreases, so the number of stitches are going to get less and less, so I'll use less and less yarn. So I think when I started with the greens, I think it was, uh, I started to do more rows. I think it was eight rows instead of the six rows. And if it doesn't end up working out for the sleeves, I'll make do somehow. I'm not too stressed or worried about it. Not anymore. This isn't meant to be you know, like an exam. (laughs) And then I had to make the decision for what yarn I wanted to use at the bottom. And I didn't have any fiber fox yarn in a color that would have worked. All of them are very speckled or variegated. And I wanted either a black or a very dark gray. And so I spent a lot of time looking at different yarns online and then eventually settled on one by Sundersgarn, which is Sisu um, in this. It's, maybe you can see a bit in the sun. It's a slightly um, mild color. Um, It is black, but it has a bit of like whitish gray in it. So it's not like a stark black. And that I think looks really good. Uh, So I bought two skeins of this. It's Superwash, which the Fiber Fox yarn is as well. I also tried to match like fiber content and percentage as best as I could. The Fiber Fox one I got in the sock yarn, which is 7525 merino nylon. Um, this is an 8020, so it is plumper and more woolly feeling. 
So it is a bit thicker and you can in person really see that there is a bit of difference, but I'm hoping that will kind of block out and not be too obvious. It's not so obvious that you look at it and go, what the heck is going on here? It is just something, especially if you feel it, that you notice a difference. So I did finish the body just the other day <laughs> and I did the ribbing a lot shorter than recommended. I think you're meant to do like six centimeters. I did four. I was trying it on. I was also keeping an eye on just how it looked visually. And I felt that with all of this kind of like color going on, I didn't want the ribbing to be much longer than any of the kind of like main bits of color that you your eye is drawn to. So that's why I did four centimeters. And now I just have the sleeves left to do. I have started on the first one. I've got my cable on there. I've picked up my stitches. I've done my first decrease round. Um, I did that quite early on just to test that everything was going to work out. So I've knitted one color already and now I'm on the second color for the sleeves and I'll start working on this soon and it should be more than enough based on what I've got left uh, to be able to do both sleeves and then what's left of the sisu. So I've got full skein and then what's left from the body ribbing uh, to do the button band around and then it'll be all done. And I don't think I've decided on buttons yet. I think I need relatively small ones, which is a good thing because I've got a lot of them in my stash. I don't have bigger buttons really in my stash. But I really love how it looks. Um, the colors I really love. The only thing, like I'm not a big pink person, so I love this, what you can currently see with the red. And the like purple, blues, greens are so my kind of colors. The pink is just not really me, but I don't mind that. Um, it makes sense in there. But I think it's just a very different piece and I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy that I stuck it out and kept going with it. And now the sleeves shouldn't be too hard, especially once I've done one, the second one would be a breeze. But this is all, all my, my mini skeins. I started out winding them. It's a pain when they get really small though. Um, it's already a pain from the beginning. So I have a couple that I've wound like this and they've all got labels on there that say like what day it is so I keep them in the right order but then eventually I was just winding them by hand. It's not a lot of yarn that you're winding. And so I can just slowly work through these. Um, I was thinking about trying to do both sleeves sort of at the same time as in when I finish with one color and one sleeve start using it on the next one and just kind of work sort of like a chase. <laughs> But I don't think I'm going to do that because I'll have way too many like balls of yarn attached. It was already a pain when I had um, two different colors on the body and that one, like one on the sleeve, I just, it was a faff and I hated it. So I'm just going to do one sleeve and the second one might end up looking a bit different, but it doesn't matter. It's far enough from the second sleeve and I'm just not stressed about it anymore. So I've got all these lovely goodies and for the colors I used before, for splitting the sleeves and body. I've put them into a magic knot ball here. I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do with it yet. I was thinking socks, but now I've also been thinking I might have enough left where it could be a really cool thing to use um, as a contrast color for color work. So we'll see. But excited that that is starting to come together, look as beautiful as I'd hoped, and it's just working out, which is nice. I've got two new cast-ons to share. And I should say, like, I obviously have more projects than this on my needles. It's just, I'm only ever really sharing the projects where I've actually made some decent progress, where there's something to kind of be said about it. Because uh, otherwise, one, would be here forever if I talked about everything every time. Um, and also, I just wouldn't really have anything to say. Like, especially some of the projects, um, like scrappy projects where I'm making blankets and things. There's only so many times I can go, look, I added two rows or... You know, I crocheted two more squares or something like that. But And instead, I'll share them less frequently, but then you get, kind of get to see more progress on it. Uh, the first thing that I started, and I'd actually already started it um, when I filmed my previous video, it's just I had, like, less than an inch knitted up, and I was like, let's just leave it for a future video. And that is the Velvet Miracal by Andrea Mary. So here you can see I have a decent amount of it done now. I'm over halfway and the reason you might be able to tell I'm over halfway is um, at this point here you switch the two colors and work 
I do essentially the same chart again, but there is a separate one to make it easier for you to see. And so I'm just over halfway now. I've done almost like almost a quarter of the repeat, um, a quarter of the whole half that I've already worked. And the yarn that I'm using is what I had left over from my Luminate sweater because I finished that sweater and immediately felt the need to start something new. And I thought this would be perfect. So this is a sport weight, 100% wool yarn that I had um, left over from that. And then I'm using the two skeins of Surrey alpaca, also fiber spate, cumulus, um, held double. And yeah, I've just been knitting away on this. I've really been loving it. Uh, I do need to have the chart up at all times. The repeats are short, but there's not that many stitches, so it changes constantly. There are some rows where you really just get the feel for it. Someone else might be able to just, you know, memorize it. Not me. And at the end of it, once I've done the second, finished the second half, you graft it together. You've got a provisional cast on here. I always use cotton because that makes it the easiest when you have to like undo it. But you're meant to put like a twist in it and then join it together. I'm not sure if I'll do that. Two reasons. One, um, I'm not sure if I like the look, plus I have a big head, so I'm worried it won't fit over anymore. <laughs> and the other reason is this is all the yarn I've got left now. So I'm over halfway, but with the scraps and bits I had, it was really hard to figure out how much I used for the first half. Uh, so because I kind of use different leftover bits at different times and it just was a nightmare to figure out. So I don't know if I'll have enough yarn and if I don't, I might, you know, putting in the twist, if the cowl has to be shorter, it's not going to be a good idea because uh, it will be even smaller. So we'll see what happens. Um, I'm trying not to stress about it. I don't want to buy more yarn. I'll make it work somehow. Plus, you know, I made a mistake right at the beginning. <laughs> so the first row that you knit, I did in the dark blue. It was meant to be in the Surrey. And you're meant to then get this same kind of thing as here. So my first row should have been the Surrey, and then I would graft together using Kitchener Stitch in the dark blue. But I started with the dark blue. So either I'll have two stripes of dark blue, or I do the Kitchener Stitch in Surrey, which doesn't sound like fun. But if that's what I think design and visually wise would work the best, I'll do it. It's not the end of the world. It's not that many stitches. And yeah, we'll, just, we'll see with this one. But... It's been a pleasure to knit. I have more yarn actually to make another one. This was just a spontaneous kind of thing that ended up, hopefully, will work out in the end. It will work out one way or another. We'll just see whether it's actually, you know, wearable. <laughs> but pleasure to knit. I would highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. And while it is a color work project, which is always, in my opinion, a bit more demanding than a normal non-color work project, it is a very relaxing one. I don't work too quickly on it. I just take my time and it's just, it's just nice, really nice. And then the other cast on I have is recently I bought a pillow cushion really uh, for my sofa here because I don't have any. And that was from Ikea and I was like, oh, I could buy a pillow cover or oh, I'm a knitter. I can just make one. So my mom, when she was visiting, um, she'd made a jumper using this beautiful blue yarn by BC Garn called Summer in Cashmere. And 90% organic cotton, 10% cashmere. It is softer than kind of normal cotton, I'm assuming because of the cashmere, but it's just a beautiful color. It feels pretty nice. It's about a sport weight and I did a gauge swatch and was like, okay, I'm going to hold it double to make sure, you know, you don't see anything through and that it's like a sturdy enough thing. Um, and I'm using three millimeter needles, like I said, holding it double. This is how much I currently have. I decided to do broken rib just so it would be a bit different. And it's a 50 by 50 centimeter pillow. So I did a gauge swatch, like a quick one, to calculate how many stitches I would need. I did the Judy's Magic cast on, so I could immediately work it in the round. And what I'll do at the top is knit until I've got the correct le length, cast off half the stitches, and then continue um, just with half of them, making like a little flap. I'll probably stitch it down at the sides and make two buttonholes for the flap, 
because I've got two quite big buttons that I got at some point with an order and I have no idea what to do with them and I thought this would be perfect. So my mum left me two full skeins and then like this one where there's like 80% left of it and after I did this amount where I'm almost done with the first two skeins I calculated how much I got out of two skeins and figured out I probably am going to need about six in total so I just went online bought three more um, at the same time as I bought the Sisu I think actually so it was just kind of a a nice normally when I buy yarn it's for a new project I'm excited to start something new but with this it was more a necessity in some ways for things that I really kind of needed in my house or you know to be able to finish a project and that just felt amazing I love that but that's all the projects I've got to share um, the only other thing is just kind of future cast on chat so like I mentioned I'm hoping to be able to make it to Yarndale in September which means I'd like to be able to wear a few finished objects um, during those days made out of hand dyed yarn. So one is I'd love to be able to wear the telegram cardigan there because I'm just like I'm so proud, proud of that whole thing ends up exactly the way I'm hoping so I want to be able to just show it off and wear it and just wear it really I don't care about the showing off. And then the other thing because I'm helping Jess from Skein in the Stitch I have yarn to make the Leto, Leto sweater from uh, by Anna Johanna from Strands of Joy. I've got, it's sport weight, I've got four skeins I think of her ivy colour and then I've got a single skein from Noodle Soup um, who's also a dyer based in the UK which I'll use for the contrast colour. So I'm hoping to start that soon. And then I've also got yarn which I bought from her at EOYF uh, in a dark bluish kind of colour where I'm hoping to make the marble mount by Hovi Locatelli. Now that's fingering weight, so we'll see whether that works if I manage to finish it. And the only other thing I quickly wanted to mention, oh no, hang on, there was one more. I was also thinking of potentially seeing if I could make the Pink Velvet by Andrea Maori. I've got yarn for that from the Fiber Fox, but I've got some Fiber Fox jumpers already that I could wear. And I think the skein and the stitch ones are kind of higher priority and it'd be nice to have two instead of just one. So we'll see how that all happens. But a sort of embarrassing thing. Back in 2020, I think it was. Maybe 2021, I can't fully remember now. I had won an award at my university for some of the teaching that I did. And it included money as well. And of course, being a knitter, I immediately went and was like, I'm going to buy yarn with it. Why save for the future? There's a pandemic going on. And I've always wanted some yarn by La Bienna May, especially from the um, Hayao Miyazaki collection. And I ended up buying uh, Pony and Susuke. So this is on the mohair. And I bought three skeins of this, which ends up being about 1,500 meters, I believe. And I bought the equivalent amount of the fingering weight yarn also in the same colour, and wanted to hold them together to make something like a no frills or a cosy classic raglan, something really simple and basic to just let the yarn shine. And then I never started it because I was scared. <laughs> I was like, it would be a really expensive jumper. I was just kind of like, I want the perfect jumper because otherwise, you know, I'm not going to be able to like buy the yarn again. It's so expensive. I don't want to have to unravel it. And then I started thinking recently, since I now have the yarn here in Germany, I was like, why don't I make two sweaters? Like I made the season sweater with a beautiful mohair and a cheaper uh, fingering, well, DK yarn for that one. I was like, I can make two jumpers now, instead of holding them together, get two beautiful jumpers out of it, and then actually wear both of them and then not just have one jumper where I'm like, this is worth a lot of money. <laughs> So what I've done is I cake this one up and I have actually swatched with it but I unraveled it because I want all the yarn <laughs> and I held it with this is soft peach um, on the merino base by Knitting for Olive and originally the skein I'll show it off once I actually get started I'll show a pure skein not caked up it looks so pink but here it looks peachy so I kind of got quite lucky I bought a couple of different colors thinking I'd have to go for something pink but this is perfect and it looked so beautiful when I was knitting it up. And I was like, I'm going to immediately start this. And then I was like, no, I need no old projects first. 
So we'll see whether I finish that anytime, finish, start that anytime soon. I don't think I will. I really am just trying, you know, to finish some old projects and then I can enjoy those newer cast ons a lot more. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. You know, next time, who knows, maybe I'll have started it, maybe I'll have abandoned my whole plan. But I'm hoping to be able to kind of stick to it, not out of my gay. I have to and any sort of punishment. It's really just, I want these projects finished. I want to be able to wear them and enjoy them. There's a reason why I started them. There's, you know, holes in my wardrobe where these would fit in. And so it's nice to get these things finished and have my needles free and the cables for it as well. <laughs> because there was a stage in my life where I couldn't um, start new projects because I had no cables or needles. I know you can just buy more, but I didn't want to do that. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. There, Well, there is more stuff I want to talk about, but the video's probably already long enough. So my computer's going crazy because it's too warm. I'm too warm. So I'm just going to leave it there. But just a quick thing of thank you to everyone entering the giveaway. Um, it's been absolutely amazing. It was lovely to read all those comments. And I had people also support me on Ko-Fi where I released the English and German translation for the Dobletoffer. Doble Toffler, uh, which are the like felted slippers by Sundersgarn, which is a free pattern. I just provided an English and a German translation where I still recommend if you want the translation, it's free on my Ko-Fi. I've just put it in the shop and Ko-Fi because it's easy, but completely free. Um, but that you still download the Sundersgarn one because it's not my pattern and there's certain bits I've left out specifically to hopefully encourage people to download it. But... Yeah, so it was really nice. Some people, you know, downloaded the pattern and then kind of also made the choice to leave a donation, which isn't a requirement at all, uh, but appreciate it because there is a lot of work that goes into translating it. Um, but the biggest thing for me is just kind of making that available to people. And if any of you use it and knit them, if there's anything you need help with, let me know, happy to help. But also if there's anything where you're like, mm, that could be phrased better, how about doing it like this, please let me know and then I'll update it so that other people, you know, can also have a better experience knitting it. Yes, I think that's everything. So, like always, you can find me on Instagram, you can, I'm being better with Ravelry. Uh, Ko-Fi, I don't really do much, it really just is, you know, if anyone wants to support financially, that's fine, you do not have to. Um, there's also the option on YouTube as well, but yes, happy knitting and I'll see you next time and thank you again for watching. Bye.